So we're also very fortunate um, that we have had very strong support over the years from the European Commission. Uh, and so now I want to, um, I think they, they, in fact, if you look at the, the budget for personalized medicine, I think it's probably in the region of about, for personalized medicine activities and research projects, it's in the region of about 2 billion between FP7 and Horizon 2020. But we're very pleased now to invite to the stage uh, Wolfgang Bircher, who is the Deputy Director General at the Research and Innovation Directorate of the European Commission. Uh, and after that, we're going to have a few words from uh, Marco Marcella, who's the head of eHealth at the Wellbeing and Aging Unit uh, at DG Connect, also at the European Commission. So I'll invite you, Wolfgang, to the stage. Thank you. Dear Chair, Dear Director General, <coughs> distinguished representatives of ministries at all governance levels, representatives of funding agencies of patient organizations, distinguished guests, I am very pleased to be here today at this conference and I would like to thank the organizers for this great opportunity to exchange our experiences in deploying personalized medicine. What is personalized medicine from the European Union's point of view and what are its opportunities? In December 2015, the health ministers of the European Union issued so-called council conclusions on personalized medicine for patients. And it is those council conclusions that state very precisely what personalized medicine means for the European Union. For us, it is a medical model using characterizations of individuals' phenotypes and genotypes for tailoring the right therapeutic strategy for the right person at the right time and or to determine the predisposition to disease and or to deliver timely and targeted prevention. I like this because I'm a lawyer and we like good definitions. And I'm proud to be able to say that the European Union has been a bit of a pioneer in the field of personalized medicine, and not just through the Council conclusions of 2015. The Commission organized already in 2011 the first European conference on personalized medicine and has spent in between billions of euros in related, unrelated research. So why do we at the European Union attach so great importance to personalized medicine? The answer is clear. Personalized medicine has a great potential to improve the provision of healthcare for the benefit of both patients and healthcare providers. Let me give a few examples. A first example illustrating the potential of personalized medicine concerns pharmacogenomics, which can increase the effectiveness of treatments, saving health care costs in the process. While many of the fields of personalized medicine are not yet fully ready for deployment, pharmacogenomics, where genes can predict a person's response to a drug, is an area that is already mature enough to be applied in medical practice. According to recent estimates, 95% of the population will, at some point during their lifetime, take a medicine for which pharmacogenomics can help. Pharmacogenomics is also the focus of a new funded project, UPGX, this project applies pharmacogenomics methods to screen and characterize people based on their genetic makeup. This screening leads to concrete, individualized recommendations for dosage regimes or risks of adverse reactions for a large number of common medicines, increasing the effectiveness of treatment. The UPGX project also presents an approach that concretely can offer savings in healthcare budgets by not having ineffective treatments prescribed 
and by reducing adverse reactions to conventional medicines. In fact, adverse drug reactions are currently estimated to account for about 5% of hospital admissions. A second example demonstrating what personalized medicine can do for uh, patients concerns prevention. Disease prevention is repeatedly cited as an area that will benefit strongly from a personalized medicine approach. While public health campaigns that promote healthy lifestyle as well as population-wide vaccination programs, programs have shown their effectiveness, individual prevention measures, measures based on personalized profiling are in their infancy. In a recent workshop organized by the Commission, delegates from public health insurance bodies discussed the promise of individualized prevention. Interestingly, while most of them acknowledged that such preventive approaches might result in cost savings in the future, they stated that the investment needed to set up such programs might not be available under present budget constraints. Perhaps this is something that needs further consideration as fostering prevention is essential for making our health system sustainable in the future. A change of paradigm in how we see the provision of health care may be needed. Ladies and gentlemen, sure, we should always remain conscious of limitations. And we should not think that through personalized medicine, we can solve all problems. But as I think you will agree with me after these examples on the potential of personalized medicine. However, and I think that's the topic of today's conference, potential is not enough. We also need deployment. This is really important. We must make sure that good solutions offered by the research we fund also reach health systems and finally the citizens. There is too much good science that despite receiving recognition in academic circles is never put into practice. We must therefore increase our efforts to make sure that research results are translated into efficient medical practices, products, and procedures that can be implemented. This is not only important for reasons of efficiency and effectiveness. This is also important for reasons of inclusiveness. We know that many fear that personalized medicine will deliver treatments for the rich only. I believe that personalized medicine approaches can deliver savings by treatment optimization and by replacing less efficient therapies and thus become beneficial for the overall health care. An important issue is certainly access to medicines and equitable health care. This we hope to have duly addressed when personalized medicine is being rolled out at large scale. It is our collective responsibility to ensure the optimal use of our health care resources. Luckily, personalized medicine, as we have already heard today, is already being deployed in practice. I return to the EU-funded project 2PGX. Several of the hospitals that participate in this study are already testing the approaches developed in their daily routine. This is the case, for example, in the Netherlands, Sweden, Slovenia, and Austria. Some member states and regions in Europe are also already progressively implementing strategies to foster personalized medicine in mainstream healthcare practice. In a recent analysis of the research and innovation smart specialization strategies of the structural funds, 36% of the European Union regions list already 
personalized medicine as one of their priorities for regional development. So regions indeed play a key role in deploying, uh, rolling out practices of personalized medicine. We are very happy that some of these re regions are also member of the IC permit, and we hope that their experience and good practice will be shared in the wider community. Now, <clears throat> we need deployment, but certainly we need even more research and innovation. Personalized medicine has a great potential, and it is also to some extent already being rolled out. But as I've indicated, we need to go further in terms of research and innovation. And this is why research and innovation in this domain continues to constitute a priority for the European Commission. Since the Commission started to focus its effort on personalized medicine, we have supported research across the whole personalized medicine research and innovation chain, from basic understanding of diseases to demonstrating the value of patient stratification in healthcare settings. A total investment of over chair 3 billion euros from different parts of the Sevens and Horizon 2020 framework programs has been already made available over the last decades. We have dedicated complete annual work programs to boost research and development in this area. In addition, as you know, the joint undertaking Innovative Medicine Initiative, our public-private partnership with the pharmaceutical industry, is also a significant contributor to advancing research and innovation in the field of personalized medicine. I think we have contributed to scientific progress in many areas, including novel diagnostics, biomarker validation, patient stratification, and we have made significant contribution to the area of rare diseases. As you know, we are now preparing the next framework program for research and innovation, Horizon Europe, and the Commission has again adopted a broad collaborative approach, not only when it comes to the actors to be involved in research and innovation, but also when we are designing our research topics. We have very close cooperation within the European Commission between the different directorate generals concerned, Health, uh, DG Connect, and <clears throat> we have also, when it comes to the budget, I think proposed quite ambitious budget for health research in total of about 7.7 .7 billion euros. The health cluster of this new program for research and innovation uh, indeed also <clears throat> foresees uh, personalized medicine, which will be a specific focus of one of the intervention areas, in particular relating to non-communicable and rare diseases, but uh, the personalized medicine will constitute a cross-cutting priority for the whole cluster. So we hope that in the forthcoming negotiations, Member States and European Parliament will soon adopt this new framework program so that we can start preparing its implementation. So we need more innovation, but we also need to tackle other hurdles, as it has been already indicated by the previous speakers. We need to align supply with demand. Today, there is a clear research and technology push for personalized medicine approaches, but the use of pull is getting also stronger and stronger. The task now is to align those two sides, demand and provision, and sure enough, we at the Commission will increase our efforts to support this development, and already in the topics for 2019 of our work program under Horizon 2020, we foresee a pre-commercial procurement uh, in the field of next generation sequencing. This will allow for rapid and cost-effective analytics for, for routine diagnosis. 
Thus, the procurement instrument will certainly uh, um, directly help public health care providers in their research and innovation efforts. As uh, the Director General has pointed out, we need to deal with data. Data is at the core of <coughs> medical research and innovation, and we need to deal with data. But we also, we also uh, the European Commission deals with this issue, and we have just recently, and my colleague Marco will certainly refer to it, published a commission communication on the digital transformation of health and care, and we have proposed to pursue several actions in this process. Effective collection and safe management of high-quality data is indeed the most important cornerstone for a successful application of personalized medicine. The amount of gathered data increases exponentially. Experts predict that the data availability to humanity will double every day in a not so distant future. Now, the issue here is how to capture, store, and to interpret these large data sets. How to create reliable information from them and to translate this into knowledge that is easy to apply in healthcare settings. For this advanced computer technology, including artificial intelligence and machine learning, as it has been pointed out by the Director General, will be essential. Furthermore, and that was also a point raised, we are talking about sensitive data, thus security in how the data is treated is essential. I think the framework which we have created at European level provides a good balance between, on the one hand, the interest of data protections, data protection of individuals, and on the other hand, on interests of advancing research and innovation in health. But we have to steadily monitor that <coughs> these rules do not, in an unfavorable way, impact research and innovation in our area. In a recent public consultation on digitalization of health and care, over 80% of the responders were favorable of sharing their health data in a secure way to improve treatment options for patients. We need to deal with digitization. I will leave this to Marco, who is better placed to talk about this, but it is very clear that it is a big challenge in technical terms, but also when it comes to skills of our healthcare providers of the healthcare professions. Uh, <clears throat> a medical doctor will over her lifetime only see a finite number of patients. Also, she will be treating each of them in a personalized manner with the help of information technology she will be able to draw conclusions from a larger group of patients and thereby identify with more accuracy any unusual cases and possibly, possibly see some links to lifestyle factors, environment, or other diseases. To some extent, this is already happening, but can be enhanced further, also with careful integration of better training in personalized medicine approaches in the curricula of healthcare workers, and we know that healthcare workers are ready to go into this direction, but they, as I indicated, this requires careful uh, preparation also in terms of skills. Uh, one of the last points we need, and we continue to need collaboration in order to tackle all these challenges. Personalized medicine does not only require cross-border collaboration, as we have established and as you are providing an excellent example, it also requires interdisciplinary collaboration and the involvement of all stakeholders in the healthcare continuum. And I think that is also a point which IC Permet addresses. This is also why I welcome that today's conference is organized together with both the Ministry of Research and the Ministry of Health. 
and that IC permit engages both national and regional science and health authorities, as well as research funders. The need for such dialogues between different parts of government and administration on priority setting for research is vital to make sure that research and innovation truly delivers solutions for the citizens. And as I have already explained, this interdisciplinary collaborative approach is also the one we are implementing at the European Commission. And again, against that background, I'm very pleased that Marco Masella from DG Connect will intervene a little bit later. Now to your role, the role of IC Permit. IC Permit has a key role to play for the future, as it can bring together all the actors at national and regional level. The first action plan also demonstrates that alignment of activities between policymakers and funders in different countries and regions is achievable. The action plan has already informed the priority setting of calls under the framework program Horizon 2020 and the selection of topics for the ERANET on personalized medicine. It will continue guide us when we come into the new framework program as well. For the implementation of the health cluster in our future program, Horizon Europe, we must increase our efforts in better bringing together the actors across the health field to agree on the most urgent priorities to be addressed. I therefore think IC Permit will have an important role in this important task by bringing together even more health and science ministries, both at the national and regional level. I commend IC Permit for its important work in converging research priorities among member states and regions and helping in setting international guidance for the way ahead. Collaboration is key in this area and I very much look forward to learning more in this conference about how we can work together to make changes that really benefit citizens. Today's event marks a milestone in the cross-border collaboration to advance personalized medicine and I really wish you all, us all, a very successful conference. Thank you very much for your attention. So, good morning, uh, dear State Secretary, Madame Weiss, dear Director General, Madame Bond Messling, uh, dear Chair, Dear uh, representative of ministry, funding agency, ladies and gentlemen, colleague, thank you very much for uh, having me here today. It is actually a pleasure to address uh, the first conference of the International Consortium for Personalized Medicine uh, on behalf of the Director General for uh, Communication Networks, Content and uh, Technologies, um, which is responsible to develop the digital single market uh, and uh, also to make sure that uh, uh, technologies do generate a smart, sustainable and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, growth in Europe. So I am uh, actually also very pleased to be the witness of the cooperation between the European Commission when it comes to the development of strategies on personalized medicines, on research, on innovations and on uh, deployment. And uh, as you have heard, the European Commission does uh, uh, put personalized medicine as a priority for research, for technological development as well, uh, for health research specifically, for disease prevention, addressing rare diseases, uh, or also tackling societal challenges like aging. And much of these advances, as, as mentioned by my predecessor today, are actually, will actually rely on data. And they will also rely on data which is generated by digital technologies. And it will also rely on the advancement of digital technologies. And just to mention a few, we take artificial intelligence or high performance computing. We can also discuss about uh, uh, predictive analytics or big data, but also, importantly, the pooling and accessing of health data uh, from multiple sources in a secure and trusted way. 
and I and I won't like to stress these two these two elements, secure and trusted. I will elaborate a little bit on that. So these new technologies and this advancement, they will certainly empower the digital transformations towards a person-centered health and care service provision. So this will help citizens to manage their own, their own health, to contribute to cost-effectiveness solutions for healthcare providers, but also to drug discovery or to develop better tools for diagnosis. We heard those today. In April, and I come to this um, uh, if you want coordinated strategy on the transformations of the digital, uh, of the digital transformation of health and care, the European Commission uh, released a package of actions on data. And one of these actions, together with the artificial intelligence, it is about the transformation of health and care, the data-driven transformations of health and care, which actually articulates along three pillars. So the first one, it is actually to provide citizens with secure access to health data, to their data, across borders. The second one is to support uh, better data, better data to advance research for disease prevention and for personalized uh, health and care. And the third, it is about digital tools, digital tools to empower the citizens and to support that transformation, the person person-centered transformations of health and care. So the first step we are working now on at the European Commission is on a recommendation which will uh, uh, work towards the establishment of an exchange format for electronic health records, which will actually address the issues of cross-border interoperability. It will also encourage uh, solutions which actually would give trusted and secure access to data in, uh, in member states. Uh, let me touch upon an important point. This is security and trust. Fi funding is one element that the European Commission has, the power of convenings, the convening power, collaboration, but also legislation. And there are important pieces of legislation that we are uh, supporting now in relation to trust and to security. Just to mention the, uh, the work and policy uh, on the European cybersecurity capacity, but also legislation to improve the resilience of European critical infrastructures um, and, and networks. Now, closely linked to the development of personalized medicine is the work that we are doing in the second priority of the communication, so on better data to promote research and personalized medicine. And in this context, the European Commission is facilitating the work of member states that actually signed the declarations on genomics which is a cooperation mechanism among member states with the endeavor to provide access to a cohort of 1 million genomes by 2020. So this is a, a game changer for European health research and clinical practices. Sharing more genomics data will certainly improve our understanding and prevention of disease, will allow for more personalized treatment, as discussed and certainly uh, will help specifically for rare disease, cancer, or brain-related uh, disease. The declaration to date has been signed by 19 uh, member states, and the signatories member states, they commit to collaborate on the secure and authorized access to their national or regional uh, genetic banks and, and any other relevant health data. And in particular, it foresees three elements, these declarations. First, is to bring together the infrastructures and the expertise that has been generated in, 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 in the member states towards this goal of one million genomes by 2022. Second is to leverage on the investments that the member states uh, themselves have done at national level in uh, sequencing, in creating biobanking, in creating data infrastructures. And the third, it is uh, to reach to a large cohort that will provide a sufficient scale for new clinical impactful research. So, the signatures have already met once in uh, September 2018, and uh, they have shared, uh, starting to share their experiences at national level with genomics initiatives. They will discuss the governance model of access, the material and the database, and uh, a second meeting is planning to take place in, uh, in, in, uh, in December. Now, let me get to the third point, of the strategy, and that is the, about the empowerment of citizens. So the Commission is also facilitating the deployment of digital tools for integrated care, bringing together 
digital solutions and market players for large-scale deployments, and uh, specifically uh, also addressing the issues of startup and SMEs in this uh, in these fields. And uh, one element which I want to stress, which has been uh, also stressed by the previous speakers, and that this is done in collaborations with public uh, authorities and other digital stakeholders. Now, uh, these actions, policy-wise, are complemented or underpinned by research and innovation actions. As, as uh, Mr. Butcher discussed before, there is a significant investment from the, uh, from the multi-annual framework or from the research program. In DigiConnect, we specifically fund technology, so ICT for modeling, for, for simulations, we work on in silico trials or decision support systems for diagnostics and treatments. And as you heard, we will continue our engagement for research in personalized medicine during the next multi-annual framework, certainly for research and uh, development, but also through a program which the Commission has proposed, which is called the Digital Europe Program, which will which will couple with the research and innovations for deployment actions. And specifically, this is a program which aims at increasing the capacity, international competitiveness in general, and developing and reinforcing the strategic capacity, the digital capacity in Europe, including for health and care, with specific interventions on AI, on high performance computing, and on digital skills. So, it was very brief. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting a us today to the meeting, and I'm sure that this event will actually pave the way uh, towards better personalized medicine for the future. And I wish us all a successful conference. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed to uh, Wolfgang and Marco. Now we have two uh, just uh, very brief um, uh, statements from um, members of the European Parliament. Um, the first uh, was to come from uh, Marion Harkin, MEP. Uh, now, unfortunately, for technical reasons, uh, she was unable to, um, th there were problems with the video, but she has actually sent through uh, a statement and she has asked me to read it on her behalf. So I'm very happy to do that. Um, so here goes. These are the words uh, from Marion Harkin, MEP. Uh, I'm delighted to say a few words as you start your most important conference where you are linking experts and practitioners researchers and healthcare professionals, data managers and patients to discuss best practice in research implementation as well as policy making. I have taken a real interest in the topic of personalized medicine for many years now and have attended and spoken at very many events in the European Parliament on the subject. As somebody once commented to me, personalized medicine is an evolution, not a revolution, and you are very much part of that evolution in your work today and tomorrow. As we all know, personalized medicine puts the patient and the citizen at the heart of healthcare. The benefits to the patients are very significant, life-changing really, and the economic benefits are also important. Personalized medicine is a fast-growing market, and Europe's healthcare industry has the potential to build on its leading position, providing economic growth and jobs. The EU supports personalized medicine research through Horizon 2020, Innovative Medicines Initiative Research, and support for SMEs, but the EU also provides funding for collaboration between researchers, funders, regions, countries, policymakers and stakeholders. Member states are also investing in personalized medicine through their own funding programs. IC Permit also plays an important role in this process by bringing together public and not-for-profit funders of personalized medicine research. Today and tomorrow you are providing a platform to initiate and support communication and exchange on best practice approaches in personalized medicine. This platform helps members to work in a more strategic and coordinated way to bring personalized medicine beyond the lab or research center and into the clinics where patients can access personalized medicine and benefit from its application. Right now we are earmarking various EU funding opportunities for the next funding period, 2021 to 2027, and it is so important that Horizon Europe, together with national programs, foster a coordinated and cross-sectorial approach to personalized medicine research to provide the evidence necessary for qualified decision levels, uh, decisions at all levels across Europe. As a long-time supporter of personalized, medicine, medicine, of personalized medicine, let me say finally that it is great to see so many high-level and forward-thinking stakeholders attending and participating in the conference, and I wish you a productive two days in Berlin. So that is from uh, Marion Harkin, MEP.
And now, so you don't have to listen to me for a while, uh, we, have a, we actually have a real video, I think, from uh, Christian uh, Boussoy, who is uh, also a member of the European Parliament uh, representing Romania. So I don't know if the technical people are going Ladies to... Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, first of all, I'd like to start by thanking IC Permet for inviting me to take part <laughs> of the conference on personalized medicine in practice. I am very sorry for not being able to be present. These days we'll be voting Horizon Europe in the European Parliament. A healthy Europe means a wealthy Europe, and yet there are so many barriers that need to be overcome to provide top quality care for all, whatever their member state, cultural background or social class. There is much work to be done in order for citizens to spend much less time in hospitals to benefit of innovative treatments and why not of access to personalized treatments. Health services and access to treatment are fundamental nowadays for our societies. Health and the development of health services, investing and boosting innovation in this sector should be a top priority for the policy makers and it is essential for the population. I believe that I am in a position to offer a perspective on the issue of innovation and health. As a MEP from Romania and member of the ITRA and IMCO committees, I am frequently confronted with the delicate balance between innovation, emergency technologies and social anxieties or policy shortcomings. However, I am also a member of the ENVI committee and the trained physician and I can say with confidence that probably more than in any other field, people are enthusiastic about innovations in health and welcoming of opportunities. This is one of the reasons I am proud to co-chair the European Parliament's interest, interest group on innovation in health and social care and the interest group on patient access to health care. When talking about innovation, especially nowadays, Horizon Europe is in the loop of the debates. Horizon Europe will be the European Union's ninth research and innovation framework program, having 20 billion euro more than Horizon 2020 at least. And I proudly say it is the most ambitious research and innovation program to date. And for that, we should congratulate the Commission. Being at the forefront of innovation and research is the best way to ensure quality jobs and the future of competitiveness and robustness of European Union's economy. I am responsible, the rapporteur for the envy opinion on Horizon Europe, where we have tried to boost the dimension of health throughout the whole proposal, to make stronger the concept of missions and even propose a first mission, but also address some of the shortcomings of the current program. Nowadays, healthcare costs across the EU are rising and the population ages and chronic diseases become more prevalent. Fortunately, we can discuss more and more about revolutionary progress in healthcare sector. But whether we can support innovation and afford it will depend on how health systems are and will allocate resources efficiently and sustainable, invest in technology, but also in specialists. Personalized medicine is a therapeutic approach involving a use of individual's genetic and epigenetic information to tailor drug therapy or preventive care through medical decisions, practices, interventions, and products being personalized to the individual patient based on their predicted response or risk of disease. Every person has a unique variation of the human genome. Modern advances in personalized medicine rely on technology that confirms a patient's fundamental biology. DNA, RNA, or protein, which ultimately leads to confirming disease. Advances in personalized medicine will create a more unified treatment approach specific to the individual and their genome and may provide better diagnosis with earlier intervention and more efficient drug development and therapies. The move towards personalized medicine can be seen as revolutionary as imagined, rather than just a process. Although some personalized medicine approaches have already been introduced into practice in Europe, we still see an early stage of implementation. Research funding at EU level represents only 10% of total investment in biomedical research in Europe. For this emerging area of health research and innovation, coordination of actions between EU member states is definitely needed. Significant paradigm shifts will need to have and take place in medical research and healthcare for this innovative area to be fully exploited. I was appointed also a few months ago 
the rapporteur of the health trend within the European Social Fund Plus, responsible from envy committee and having a, a total uh, powers in order to improve and shape this proposal of European Commission. I do salute the reinforcement of the Union's social dimension through a flexible mechanism, but I strongly believe that this should be not be done at the detriment of usability to better deliver on citizens' expectation to protect and improve their health. Considerable achievements have been made so far under the umbrella of an existing instrument, the current health program. Establishment of the 24 European Reference Network, support for the member states to increase their capacity building to respond to outbreaks, contribution to use migration policy by supporting member states to respond to health needs of high influx of migrants and refugees, trainership for health professionals and other frontline staff, exchanges of good practices in areas of high interest of the member states, as cancer screening, alcohol reduction, HIV AIDS and TB prevention, in health support for EU health legislation on medical products and medical devices, the e-health network activities and health technology assessment. Strengthen and resilient health systems, digital transformation of health and care, sustainable EU information system, person-centered shift, effective and sustainable national reform process, robust EU financing to support that, more cooperation between member states but also at the regional and local level, all aim to secure a new EU added value for innovative and sustainable health policies. Finally, I want to underline that I firmly believe that one of the most important things that the European Commission needs to do, in tandem with the European Parliament, of course, is to bring health in Europe up to speed, is to create a regulatory environment which allows early patient access to novel treatments. I wish you a fruitful debate and look forward to the outcome of the conference and also collaborating in the future with you. Thank you so much.